Italy have been crowned European football champions at Wembley Stadium. They beat England on penalties. Italy fans rejoiced after a nail-biting finish, which saw England missing three of their five shots. A heartbreaking end for the English despite their home advantage. Wembley Stadium lit up to celebrate Italy's memorable victory. While thousands of UK-based Italy fans turned out to support their side, they were massively outnumbered by their English counterparts. But that only made victory taste sweeter. It's been very, very amazing, and it's been a great game. You know, England played very well. Unfortunately, we did better in the penalties, but, you know, what can we say? Well, I mean, it was a great game, and uh, I think uh, we, we dominated, up, and it was quite well-deserved. But England made it, like, played a good game as well, so good to them as well. Italy did it the hard way, falling behind to a Luke Shaw goal after just two minutes. But a goal mouth scramble in the second half saw Leonardo Bonucci equalize. And then three English missed penalties, sealed victory for the Azzurri. Well, I was lucky enough to be part of a great team that played in the 1990 World Cup. And I was also lucky enough to play in a fantastic U21 side in 1988. Despite being absolutely the best, we managed not to win, because football's like that. And both times we lost in penalty shootouts. Therefore, luck owed me something. Some England fans were so bent on seeing their team throw off its 55-year dry spell that they stormed the Wembley barriers. Throughout the tournament, they'd proclaimed football was coming home. Instead, it was off to Rome. It never goes to the plan. Uh, it is outbreak, man. It's... can it literally, like, I, 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 we come so far. Oh, I've lost the words. I mean, nobody's I've literally coming. lost the words. The parties in Italy's capital revved up as fans celebrated the victory, as the Azzurri claimed their first European championship since 1968. And our correspondents, of course, are standing by in the team's respective capital. Sima Gupta is in Rome and Birgit Maas in London. We start, of course, in Rome. Uh, Sima, a win for Italy, also a bit of history making for the Azzurri. Give us a sense of what Italians are saying and feeling this morning. Well, uh, last night, and I think the joy continues today as well, but it was pure joy on the piazzas of Italy throughout the country here in Rome. I saw for myself it was a roller coaster ride of a game uh, with the the feeling of intense shock when when England scored so early on, uh, but then they came back with that equaliser, and then of course we saw that incredibly tense and nail-biting penalty, but yes, history-making. The last time the Azzurri won the European Championship was back in 1968, and so this is the second time round. We know that the team is back on Italian soil this morning. They will be meeting with President Mattarella, as well as the Prime Minister Mario Draghi. The papers here in Italy say it all. Uh, the sports paper here I have with me, Gazzetto dello Sport, saying troppo bello. Basically, it was too beautiful what happened last night at Wembley. And then we have Correra dello Sport saying e nostro, it's ours. And all of them leading with the picture of the squad carrying the cup. And Tutto Sport also saying it's us this time round. And clearly, even the regular papers are leading with this. La Repubblica, the Rome-based daily, saying Europe is ours, as well as the Milan-based daily, Correa della Sera, i campioni siamo noi, we are the champions. So really, euphoria all round uh, with this win, and a historic one, as you mentioned. So let's go to Bigot Mass in London. Probably a slightly different general mood there. Definitely downcast, Gerhard. Last night, the nation was really electric, one could almost say. Uh, they were so hopeful that after waiting for 55 years, that finally they might win an international tournament. And where I watched was with a lot of young people. And when they lost, I have to say, <laughs> they were devastated. And a lot of the young men had to be comforted by their girlfriends. So that was uh, quite touching. And 
If you look at the papers, you know, it's, it's similar. They are saying it all ends in tears. So, you know, you can see the sadness uh, that says the Daily Mail. And then we have the sun here. And um, we again have the manager comforting one of the players who missed the penalty. But also the sun quotes uh, Prince William, who said, you can all hold your heads high and can be so proud. So I think that's also a sentiment that a lot of people are really recognizing that England played extremely well and they say there are hopes for next year's World Cup. Mm. Birgit, um, you're holding the papers there. Also, a story has emerged about the three England players who missed their penalties. Tell us about that. Well, uh, yes, indeed. So some of the players who missed the penalties uh, were targeted online. Uh, quite a lot of racial abuse. And um, that has, um, in turn, had a, a, another strong reaction on, on social media. So, for example, Prime Minister Boris Johnson tweeted that those um, who are racially abusing some of the players, that they, uh, you know, they are, should be ashamed and they shouldn't be um, they shouldn't be called football fans, something in that vein. And also the Football Association themselves, um, you know, they, they're saying that there is no place for, for racism uh, in football. And it's really quite an interesting story because this is a very diverse team and uh, the players have taken the knee uh, in the past and, and some fans were not happy with that, some booed. But I think a lot of people um, are really seeing that actually as, as, as something positive, that this is a is a diverse and 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 in a way um, you know progressive team as as some people would say it and and there's also been a, a lot of support and has been remarked that um, you know the English flag was uh, recaptured from the far right and it's something for the whole nation the whole diverse English and British nation to to resemble uh, behind. Thanks, Sima Gupta in Rome and Birgit Maas in London. And joining me now in the studio is an Englishman, Max Merrill, uh, and also a member of uh, our DW sports team. Um, just talk us through this game. Did they uh, win, the Italians win this tournament deservedly? I think on the whole you have to say yes. Even the most passionate England fan has to recognise that this was Italy's tournament. Uh, Giorgio Chiellini said after the match that at the beginning of the tournament they felt a sort of magic in that group. And uh, that carried on and grew throughout the tournament. And, you know, we have to remember they weren't favourites. Italy didn't mm. qualify for the last World Cup in 2018. Came into this tournament on a sort of redemption tour. Insiders, especially in Italy, tipped them to do well in this tournament. But, you know, it's, a lot of it is down to the chemistry that Roberto Mancini was able to create with this group. Also, the Italian league, the Serie A, has been proved markedly a little bit under the radar for sort of mainstream football fans. And a lot of the uh, members of this team that people didn't know are from sort of mid-table clubs or, or clubs that, unlike Juventus and Milan, that are not established big names. So I think they had a really great chemistry in this group, played a fantastic tournament, captured the hearts of the neutrals as well, and in the end, deserved to win the title. Mm. Uh, also, let's talk about England, uh, uh, the squad. Uh, the young English footballers that Southgate brought, uh, brought on to uh, uh, do the penalties. Was that a wise move? I think, you know, in hindsight, you, could, you can question his decision. Um, and, you know, for them, it's, it's really tough now. You know, we heard from Birgit that there has been some nasty, nasty reaction. Yeah. Obviously, we hope to see more people stand up for them. I think the key takeaway for me is their bravery. To step up and take a penalty in this kind of moment takes a lot of bravery. Uh, they weren't shy. And in the past, England have struggled in penalties where they were in kind of went into their shell a little bit. And Southgate has changed the mentality, asked for positivity, used psychologists as well in his team to help the players deal with these kind of high-pressure situations. And they practiced in training and, and also said, look, this is the, the, the five players that we came up with to take the penalties. You can't replicate what happens in this kind of moment. We can see here the, the, the players, you know, the type of pressure they're under, the type of pressure they're putting themselves under as well. Mm. You can't replicate that. So in the end... I think we have to praise them for their bravery and praise Jordan Pickford for saving two penalties and keeping them in it. Yeah, Pickford actually, uh, quite amazing what he did there. But uh, England still struggling with penalties. Will it ever end briefly? I think so. You know, the last two shootouts before this in the Nations League and in the World Cup against Colombia, they won. This one, heartache again, but it's a young group. 2022 World Cup is just a little over 500 days away, so they can take this 
on and hopefully grow strength to strength. Let's hope. Thank you very much, Max Merrill there.